Dear friends, in this lecture what we will try to basically understand is the whole concept of strain. The essential difference between rigid body mechanics and strength of material is that in rigid body mechanics we assume that relative displacement between two points within a body is equal to zero. But in strength of material we account for deformations and as such relative displacement between two points within a body whatever be the magnitude of the forces will not be equal to zero. So essentially in strength of material we account for deformations and deformations are characterized by strain in strength of material language. So what is the whole concept of strain? The formula of strain is change in original dimension dimension by the original dimension. Now both of this uh, units of meter uh, of length so basically they cancel out and as such strain will have no unit as such. Now the next thing we got to understand is that there are different types of strain and let us take let us understand those type of strains one by one. Now as we know that normal stresses originate when some kind of a force is applied perpendicular to the cross section and this normal strain gives rise to some sort of a normal strain. So essentially what a normal strain? If this is one hanger and this is one rod and I decide to pull this rod by a force P and suppose this is my length L then this rod will elongate and the change in length suppose will be equal to del L then strain will be basically equal to del L by L and this is the whole concept of normal strain so therefore this force P is acting normal to the cross sectional area and there is a change of length which is quantified by del L so strain is the change in length that is del L by original length that is L the next thing that we are going to do is basically understand the concept of shear strain. For example, if there is a box like this and it is rooted to a table suppose. Now let us suppose that this is this plane that I am shedding now is A, B, C, D and as it is rooted to the table this plane won't suffer any displacement. But this plane E, F, G, H due to a force F which is applied parallel to this cross sectional area A will have a change in its, in its position and basically B F will shift to B F dash and C G will shift to suppose C G dash. Right, so essentially there is a relative displacement of the plane BF to BF dash and CG to CG dash. Similarly, AE will shift to AE dash and H, DH will shift to DH dash. So there is a relative displacement of this plane from here to here. And as such, we say that if this is the shear stress, that is F by A, it induces a shear strain which is given as gamma and this will be equal to nothing but tan theta but theta is this angle in radian theta is the angle by which this plane changes its position and this tan theta will be equal to f f dash which is nothing but suppose delta L and by bf which is nothing but L so this is the whole concept of shear strain now we'll take a look at volumetric strain and understand what is it all of what volumetric strain is all about again we take some kind of an element and let the element be under compressive pressure from all sides now suppose this is L this is suppose B and this H this is H so the original volume of this element is nothing but is equal to LBH right now due to this compressive pressure applied on all sides L will decrease its length by del L 
B will decrease its length by del B and H will decrease its length by del H. So essentially this is the new original dimensions, new di sorry, the new dimensions. So essentially the change in volume will be equal to the original volume that is LBH minus this into this into this. So L minus del L, B minus del B and H minus del H. And EV which is known as the volumetric strain is this change in volume that is del V suppose by original volume. So this is the overall concept of volumetric strain. Now we'll take a look and um, yeah, I forgot one thing. If I have, this pressure is applied from all sides, right? This pressure is, there's a compressive pressure applied from all sides, right? And now, <coughs> now we'll do and understand the concept of Poisson's ratio. For example, if I have a hanger like this and I have a rod like this, I let it be pulled by a force P. Then if suppose this is my Y direction and this is my X direction, due to the pull of force P, there will be elongation along Y direction and that I denote by delta Y. But at the same time, there will be certain shortening in the X direction. That is in the direction perpendicular to which the force is applied. So there will be certain shortening along this direction that is there will be certain actual contraction along the x direction and certain actual elongation along the y direction so poisson ratio is nothing but is equal to change in lateral dimension the lateral dimension being the direction of x by change in longitudinal direction dimension that is delta y so it's essentially, both of this will have different signs because if delta y is actual, t actual elongation, then delta x will be actual compression. So minus of delta x by delta y. Now it's very evident from this figure that uh, the, the value of Poisson's ratio will be, most of the cases will be lesser than 1 because it will be of very less occurrence that delta x will be greater than delta y. Now, the one thing we have to understand is uh, the concept of Poisson ratio, it, the, the Poisson ratio should always be less than 0 0.5. Mu should be always zero, less than 0 0.5 and this will obtain from the next lecture, right, when we study about the modulus of elasticity. And Poisson ratio for structural steel, which is very important for civil engineers, is 0 0.3 and for country, it is equal to 0 0.1. Thanks a lot for listening. Thanks you.